Mercedes made progress and was a threat to Red Bull in the second half of 2022, with George Russell winning both races at Interlagos. But it regressed in 2023 and instantly expressed regret for continuing with its W14 concept. Let's see their way of approach. Lewis Hamilton, the seven-time world champion, has claimed that his Mercedes team did not listen to him when constructing the 2023 Formula One car. Before finishing fifth in Bahrain's Grand Prix opener, the British Britain told reporters last week that Mercedes was on the wrong track. There were things I told them last year. I said, the car issues. Hamilton told BBC Radio 5 Live's Checkered Flag podcast. I've driven a lot of cars in my life, so I know what a car requires. I know what an automobile does not require. I believe it is all about accountability. It's about admitting defeat and saying, you know what, we didn't pay attention to you. It's not where it should be, and we have to work on it, he explained. We have to look at the balance through the corners, all the weak points, and just huddle up as a team. That's exactly what we do. Hamilton, 38, is the most successful Formula One driver of all time, with a record 103 victories. But his contract expires at the conclusion of the season. He did not win a race last year, a career first for a season. But he has refuted speculation that he is delaying a new contract until he knows how competitive his car is. He told the BBC that Mercedes, whose run of eight consecutive constructors' titles ended last year, still had time to turn things around. You know, we're still multiple world champions. It's just that we didn't get things right this year. Last year, we didn't get it right. But that doesn't mean we can't get it right in the future, he says. Toto Wolff, the team leader, said in Bahrain that Mercedes needed to redesign the car. I don't think this package is going to be competitive eventually, Wolf said of the car, which sticks out for its slim down side pods. As opposed to Red Bull's solution, we got it wrong last year. We thought we could fix it by sticking to this concept of a car, and it didn't work out. Max Verstappen of Red Bull triumphed in Bahrain, with Sergio Perez completing the 1-2 finish. Fernando Alonso of Aston Martin finished third in a car powered by a Mercedes engine. Mercedes' collapse was largely due to believing numbers in the virtual world that couldn't be recreated in in the real world conditions, as seen by its severe maiden shakedown at Silverstone in February 2022. Mercedes' simulation gave sensational figures, Hughes continued. If the W13 had performed as predicted, Red Bull and Ferrari would have been left in the dust. It was that clear. Mercedes dominated Formula One after the introduction of turbo hybrid engines in 2014, winning eight consecutive constructors' titles, the first seven of which were backed by drivers' titles. Six for Hamilton and one for Nico Rosberg. While Red Bull had proven to be a match for Mercedes with Verstappen's inaugural title in 2021, a decision had already been made to implement radical new design requirements for 2022, which would theoretically allow for a reset of the existing pecking order. Mercedes went into that season believing it would have a huge advantage, and there was an exciting buzz circulating around just how good this car was before it ran. The real world inconvenience got in the way of making those simulations accurate. Mercedes' most infamous foe in 2022 wasn't Red Bull like the year before, but the purpoising that literally scared its drivers to the point of minor injuries, keeping it out of Red Bull and Ferrari's early 2022 clash. The purpoising phenomenon hadn't shown up in the simulation, not just in the Mercedes, but not anywhere else, Hughes went on to say. So, as the throat tunnel gets closer to the ground, the underfloor downforce stalls. The back of the car rises up on its suspension, unblocking the ventry and pulling the car back down. With the front of the car reacting to the rear going down and up, you get this purpoising movement. It's not only causing the downforce to be highly inconsistent, it causes you to lock your wheels and drive slower into turns, making the automobile extremely difficult to drive. What was exacerbating the purpoising on the Mercedes was this massive area of exposed floor. So as the car was pulled down, the floor was like a cantilever and bending down, exacerbating that effect. In order to keep the car from porpoising, two things were required, a stiffer, heavier floor and a higher rear ride height. The first was rather simple, but the second was impossible. The pickup locations in the gearbox design made it impossible to run the rear as high as it was required to halt the purpoising. Thus, the suspension had 
want to be run extremely stiff to keep it from running too low and resisting the loads on it at high speed. It cured the porpoising when combined with the stiffer floor, but it caused a different but related phenomenon of bouncing. Essentially, the suspension is now stiffer than the tire sidewalls. It threw the entire car into a resonance of vertical bouncing, with comparable constraints to porpoising. Also, because the car had not been driven as low as it was intended, the underbody produced less downforce than expected. So, getting the best lap time suddenly meant using more rear wing, which made it slow on the straights as well. The stiff suspension gave it an awful feel, less trait, in slow turns, making it unpredictable. The bouncing made it difficult to drive, and it was slow on the straights, but it possessed decent high-speed downforce once the floor was reinforced. Why is Mercedes stuck with the 2023 concept? Many people wondered why Mercedes stuck with their poor approach for a second season of regulations when Red Bull had led the way. Still, with those sensational wind tunnel simulation figures tantalizing them, for this year's W14, Mercedes decided to keep that basic aero philosophy with a redesigned rear suspension and gearbox, which gave it an appropriate range that it didn't need to be so stiff and made it more drivable and also helped it by anti porpoising floor regulation tweaks. Hughes said about the reasoning behind Mercedes' decision. They were finally able to make the concept work as intended, but it turns out that the first order porpoising and bouncing issues they encountered last year was simply hiding, a more subtle limitation. The aero concept isn't as effective as a traditional undercut. The uncovered floor and wide cis bar simply did not compensate for the lack of an undercut channel, especially when compared to the Red Bull, which has achieved tremendous improvements because of the way its suspension has been set to prevent pitch and dive. So in comparison to the Red Bull, the Mercedes now appears to run out of airflow capacity at high speeds, resulting in a decrease in high speed downforce, which is the opposite of last year. While it can now compete with Ferrari in a straight line, it lags far behind Red Bull and its spectacular DRS stall. With the designed rear suspension, it no longer bounces, its low speed handling isn't as bad, and it's a faster car than last year's. If you were to run them side by side, this one would undoubtedly be faster. However, it is more behind than the previous year due to Red Bull's gains. The concept is simply too limited and appears to have reached a plateau. Furthermore, the forward cockpit portion of the idea does not provide Hamilton with the feelings he requires to feel confident in the car. He claims to be estranged from it. So, after two years of false hope, headaches, head scratching, crushing disappointment and rethinking, what can we anticipate from the improvements set to premiere at Imola? We're led to believe its side pods, bodywork, floor, but also front suspension, which is interesting because that's part of the key that's made the Red Bull concept work so efficiently, he said. So, we'd probably expect to see a little more anti-dive built into the geometry, as the one it's run so far appears to have about 15 degrees of anti-dive. That sort of thing. The Red Bull has 45 degrees, which is significantly higher. It brings aero advantages, but also potential problems with braking and front tire warm-ups. So if Mercedes has gone in that direction, it will be interesting to know if it has solved the problems associated with it. Only time will tell if Mercedes' improvement marks the beginning of the team's return to regular title contention, or if it's simply the latest footnote in the team's saga in the modern ground effect era. What do you think of Mercedes ideologies in general? You are welcome to share your theories in the space below. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. Until next time.